And I'm back uh, with the MACD technical analysis approach uh, using the Weka Random Forest Classifier. In this video, I will present four different programs. Uh, the first two will have a single MACD running iterating over multiple values to get us the best weighted precision average value. Uh, and the sec third and fourth programs will be uh, using a double MACD with um, again going over um, iterating over values to get the best way to position value. The first program and the third program will present the other attributes as being a numeric describing the MACD, the MACD signal, MACD histogram, and the uh, daily price. The second and fourth program will have all the attributes as nominal values describing the relationship between the MACD, MACD signal, and the um, especially with the MACD and the MACD signal as they cross each other and as they cross the zero line. All right, so on to the programs. So we're into the first program that will be using the random forest classifier with MACD values. If we look at the attributes for the R file, we see we're still using that current price numeric and the three new attributes will be the MACD value, the signal, and the histogram value. We will continue using our classification attribute, which I call result, as a nominal value buy or sell. The preliminary logic is pretty much the same. Again, just to remind you that I am using a uh, five-day moving average to compare it with the current price close to kind of get a five-day trend. The output will be written to a file called MACD with numerics and we'll kick out the fast, slow, and period intervals that we'll be using along with the average weight percentage precision. <clears throat> we uh, have in the program three four loops. Uh, the three intervals that we'll be using are called fast, slow, and signal. Fast will run between 3 and 15. Slow will be one more than fast up to a value of 20. And then the signal value that will pass will be between the values of 2 and 10. For the TALib MACD method, we pass, uh, we get back three double arrays, so the MACD, the signal, and the histogram values. We call the MACD process. The first two, first three values are pretty much the same. There's the intervals that we'll be passing, and here's the output arrays that we will be expecting. And with all the other code, we rebuild the output array so that the uh, index values line up with our closing values in the incoming data. Here's the training file and the test file that would be used to pass to the classification. If the data is prior to 2016, it's written to the training ARF, otherwise it's written to the test ARF. And again, we just pass the close, the MACD value, the MACD signal, and the MACD histogram, along with a comparison of the current price with the average for the five days looking ahead. Build the training instances, call random forest, build the classifiers, build the test instances, build the evaluation object and pass it the test instances, and then we kick out to uh, the file, our report file, the intervals used along with the weighted precision. So that should be good to go. I'm going to run this and uh, this is running on an i7 8 core machine. It takes about two hours for this to run. So I'll stop here and restart when it's finishing up. Okay, so uh, coming to an end here. 
as you can see we're up to one of the last of the values we terminated at 526 it started at 5 uh, it took an hour and 15 minutes let's take a look at our output file refresh refresh is 5 open with uh, Uh, let's like open another screen. Let me pull that over here for you. So we'll just sort this on average weight precision. Descending. And what do we get? We get a uh, fast of five, a slow of six, and a period of five, and uh, pretty much uh, everything else. That's That's the best, and there's a lot of backing, filling in, and uh, grouping around this 5.59. But uh, So this line here is our best return. Okay, uh, now we'll go over to the program that does a uh, all nominal values. Close this. Uh, save document. Sure, why not? And that one is called MACD with nominals. In this case, so we're going to take the MACD and compare it to the signal. We're taking out the current close. We're going to compare the MACD to the signal if it's over or under the signal. Compare the MACD to zero. And compare histogram to zero. And then there's our buy sell. Pretty much everything's the same. Four loops are the same. We do our comparisons. Obviously, that's going to be different. Compare the MACD to the signal, MACD to the zero, signal to zero, and so on and so forth. Output is going to be written to spy MACD with nominals. So let's run this. This is going to run really fast. And let's see here. Run. And there it goes. This is going to be very quick. But I'll be right back. Back, and that finished a lot faster than I thought. Uh, that was That ran under five minutes. Let's take a look at its output. Do the refresh. MACD with nominals. Okay, and uh, let's sort this on that field weighted precision descending. Oh, 0.76 with uh, with a fast of five, slow of 18, and a signal period of two. And everything else is kind of bunches around uh, 0.66 or so. All right, let's take a look at the double program. Save it. Yes. The double program is. MACD with numerics. Okay, we have a. <clears throat> we're going to do two MACDs. Uh, one's considered a fast and one's considered a slow, kind of like a crossover with the moving average, two moving averages. I got this from a YouTube video. The guy likes to use a. The fellow likes to use a uh, confirmation. So I just figured why not try it with uh, two MACDs and see if the. Uh, Classifier can figure it out, or something similar to that. So we have a MACD and the MACD histogram, the signal. Then we have the MACD again, but this time it's for the slow. Histogram again for the slow, and the signal again for the slow. We're going to be using numeric values. A, we'll have uh, actually six for loops this time. The fast will go from two to five. The fast fast will go from two to five, and the slow fast will go from uh, seven, start at seven, go up to nine. And the period will be from 2 to 4. Uh, the fast slow will start at 9, go through 15. Uh, the 
slow will be five more than the fast and go to 20 and then the again the period for this one the signal period for this one will be from uh, two through four so we'll have to uh, obviously call a MACD function twice and rebuild our output and then in our uh, building the ARF statements again we're still using the current day close fast signal fast histogram fast slow MACD signal slow slow histogram and again the five day <clears throat> look ahead on the uh, moving average comparing it to the current date if it's a buyer or a sell everything else remains the same oh in this car so we change the output we want to see what the different outputs are so we have fast fast slow fast period fast fast slow 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 period slow for the iterations of the for loops and then again the uh, weighted precision this will be kicked out to a file called spy double macd with numeric csv and let's run that and like the first program since it's doing numeric comparisons or uh, classifications it takes a very long time to run so I'll come back okay so uh, we're done uh, the program actually finished a long time ago but I went out and had dinner and went to a movie came back and so it's done and if we go look at the output file which was called uh, spy double Mac with but we'll just pop it over here and do a data sort on average weighted precision We get a point five nine nine, a bunch of those. So uh, it's really not any better than the single MACD numeric. So now we'll run the program that does a, a double MACD with nominals. Again. No, 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 no. What we got is MACD to zero histogram to zero and then the MACD to histogram and we do it for the fast slow and then the result again buy or sell we got our double loop here for the fast and the slow rebuilding the output in output uh, arrays and then generating the R file by comparing and specifying if it's over or under. This goes to a file called uh, MACD with nominals, obviously, and so let's run that. And this will run pretty quickly. Okay, uh, we're back. <clears throat> I know I said it was going to take a, wouldn't take too long to run, but I started it at 8.15 uh, last night, and by 8.30 it was still running in the... Uh, so it probably took a couple hours to run. This is the next day. Here are results. We'll take a look at the CSV file it built. Let's do a refresh. Mac, double MACD with nominals. Sort it on average weight precision. Uh, let's do that descending. And we're up near uh, almost 0.8 at 0.77, several of them here. It's pretty interesting that uh, Kind of a cluster, of definitely a fast fast at three, and the cluster of uh, slow fast around twelve. Fast slow around eleven is a good cluster there, and slow slow again, and pretty much all over the place. Even the period slow is all over the place. Okay, so uh, I'll put a couple of spreadsheet 
uh, a spreadsheet together showing the, the results from the four runs and uh, have a little quick discussion about that. So here's a quick uh, spreadsheet I put together describing the best results from each of the four different runs uh, <clears throat> with the best average weight of precision. The first one is the numeric with just one MACD with an average weight of 0 0.605. The second is the nominal with just one MACD with an average weight of precision of 0.77. The numeric with two MACDs has a value of 0.6 essentially. And finally the last uh, double MACD with all nominal attributes came with an uh, average weight of precision of 0.77. Uh, the interesting to note is that the nominals do best on their predictions, probably because it's uh, less confusing for the algorithms, less data for them to try to get as close to as possible. And the other interesting thing is that in the single MACD numeric did much better than the double MACD numeric, probably for the same reason. So um, after this video, um, the next one will be using the RSI. Following that, the second video after this will be a, a shootout uh, for the best moving average. Uh, in the previous videos, I did a simple moving average. The next, the second one will have uh, all the different available moving averages and looking at crossovers and find out with that, uh, what, find out which moving average produces the best results. And then the third one will do an actual shootout between all four uh, different algorithms to find uh, which one produces the best estimates um, looking out into the future like we did with the fourth video that I produced. Until then, if you like what you see, please press the like button and uh, subscribe.